there were a lot of stories written when 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 you took the job uh, about you know teams have been trying to lure you to their front offices for for a number of years. What was said? What was it about this job that made it be the one that you jumped to? Well, here's the thing. Like, you know, I think people get excited about new opportunities, but but I've been at Nike for you know 19 years, and and I love my job. And so if I'm going to leave a dream job to go to another job, everything has to check. All the boxes have to check. And I think really when you look at Dallas, uh, the owner, you think about the players that they have, um, starting with, you know, an all-NBA player in Luka. Like, you can't just get that every day. The city, I love Dallas. I think players want to come to Dallas. The fans are amazing. Uh, And then Coach Kidd. The athletic articles came out, obviously, with the departure of Rick and Donnie. And there was a suggestion in there, Nico, that, you know, Mark – is going to be making the basketball calls. He's going to have the final say. What's your understanding of that in, in terms of you being the GM, but Mark maybe making basketball decisions and calls besides just writing the final check? Yeah, I, listen, a lot of people make, make a lot of that, but Mark didn't bring me in here for just to sit around and, and watch the game. So I'm definitely going to be making decisions, but at the end of the day, Everybody has bosses. I've been in corporate America. Our CEO at Nike has bosses that he has to answer to. So, you know, we all have to answer to somebody. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, but when it comes to basketball, um, I, I feel like I'm not going to have a problem being able to make decisions. So if I call the Mavs front office this morning with a great trade idea, who am I going to speak with? <laughs> You're going to speak with me. Okay. Fair enough. Good. <laughs> if you got my number, if you don't have my number, you might not be able to get me. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll we'll find that. We're good at stalking. <laughs> yeah, trust him on that one. No, uh, at no. least I am. I, I have all the tricks. Uh, Nico, from a from a talent evaluation standpoint, you know, is 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 this role for you uh, a little bit different than what you had at Nike? Like you're evaluating talent at Nike. Obviously, you got to bring the right guys in. You can't just bring anybody in because if you miss, it's you know, it's bad, you know, bad, bad for business. But in this one, you know, it, what can we expect the talent evaluation from you to look like? Listen, I, I, I've been doing it for 19 years. I think the difference is, is that, you know, now, you know, when I was doing it on the Nike side, we're looking for people that ultimately can sell products. And now you got to put pieces together. Um, so I haven't, I haven't actually done that, but I do it all the time. You know, I look at teams and say, ooh, they need this, they need that. I'm a basketball guy. I played basketball my whole life. I played overseas. So really putting pieces together um, is, isn't going to be a problem. So you feel comfortable from like a scouting X's and O's evaluation standpoint of, of making those types of calls? 100%. And I think that's why teams have pursued me for so long because, you know, the, the guys in the industry have all seen me and picked my brain and understand that I'm, I'm truly a basketball guy. Now, listen, we all make mistakes here and there, but, but I am truly a basketball guy. Do, do you consider yourself like a scouting type, uh, analytics type as well? I, I, what what kind of uh, you know platform do you kind of see yourself uh, approaching there? I'm I'm a I, I think I approach it from a basketball lens first. You know what the eye says, and then and then you you use analytics to back that up and to to see hey do I need to look at it again? Um, is, is there something that I didn't actually see? Nico, there's so much mystery uh, surrounding an analytics guy that Mark brought in, in, in Bob Valgaris, I don't think he was specific in answering the question yesterday. So we'll ask you with this amazing interview and answers you've already provided, right. I think you can finally solve the mystery. Is Bob Valgaris going to be working with the Dallas Mavericks and you next year? I can honestly say I don't know. I haven't met Bob. I read the article, um, but I haven't even spoken to Bob. So so I'll get, I'll get a chance to get with him and, and try to understand his his philosophy and mentality and what went wrong, if, if, any, if anything. You know, I don't know how much of the article is true or not, but I definitely read the article. Nico, where do you guys stand on Kristaps uh, Porzingis? Is, is he someone that you may be looking to trade uh, this offseason, or is, is he a long-term uh, play here? I'm actually excited about Kristaps. I, uh, I think he's finally healthy. Um, I think, I think what, what Jason Kidd is going to bring in terms of, communication and really wrapping his arms around people I, I honestly think he's gonna he's gonna really flourish in the system that that Jason's gonna bring 
Jason had called him like a, a perfect fit with Luca, and, and I think the collective around here was, how is he seeing that? What, <laughs> what does what do you guys see that makes him a perfect fit? Well, I think I think the skill sets that he brings um, it, it matches with Luca, but I also think that you know the the thing about Kristaps is he becomes kind of the the people people put a lot on him in terms of the reason why the, the season ended, but then he was doing what he was told to do. And and he's actually a team player. And I, I think we'll just put him in position to succeed. What does that mean? Uh, that was very interesting from Cuban yesterday. He is being told, uh, he did what he was being told to do. We were counting him uh, on him to be the Robin here, that the Mavs can't get to the West Finals or the NBA Finals unless he's the true number two uh, what, what what does that mean? He was just being told to, to, to he executed and being told what he what to do. Well, it's it's tough for me to to give you a, a really good answer with that, just because I wasn't around and I and I don't really know what Rick's system was and where where he put him and what he wanted him to do. But I can say that with Jason, it's going to be completely different.